Yeah. <laughs> is this test here, or are you just? This gonna... is, I'm I'm just plugged it in. I okay. think. Okay, I got to redeem myself. Last time we had Adam on, I forgot to plug in the mixer Testing. into the phone. <laughs> Testing. So the sound was just god awful. Yeah. But I think we should be good. I can see everybody's smiling. Would you mind bringing up the stream quick to see yep. how the sound quality is? If you don't mind. Sure. I don't really care about how we start off. So as <laughs> long as it's good. Hey, we're live. Oh, we are live. Okay. But I just still see a picture of Kyle. Okay, talk in your mic. Mike. Oh, there I am. I, yeah, I think. Nice little delay. Testing. Yep. Okay. Testing. <laughs> we better stop this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to drive ourselves nuts. Okay. Episode uh, 10, I think, yep. of Project Ion. We've got Dave Morin with us. Hi, Dave. How Howdy. Good. And we've got Adam Forsyth, too. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And, of course, Kyle over in his Hi. corner. Hey. Melting into the couch. Yep. Welcome to the gym show. <laughs> the gym <laughs> show. The coattail riding fellows over yeah. here. So, yeah. Hey, that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> Oh dear! Everybody had a good holiday. I think we got caught up on that somewhat. Well, before we were, recording. mine was quite uneventful. We, it, it's been the first holiday season I've been able to spend a lot of time with my family. So mm -hmm. it's nice being able to move back and do some of the things that we used to do on Christmas, and and just have it be kind of quiet and relaxed. So it was good. It was overdue by yeah. years. Didn't really feel like a holiday. It's like what forty five degrees out right now or today, and it was mild on christmas as well it's been weird yeah it's kind of it's kind of different but i have to say i don't even though it's kind of twilight zone ish to see people at the park with shorts on yeah um is, i am not opposed or offended to that is this your first winner in iowa day or is this your second? this is my second, second winner okay and i have to say last winter felt very winter it sort of broke me yeah, in last year was yeah. a or doozy. broke me somewhere in between <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah this is strange so what one decent snowfall and that's about it yeah. so mm -hmm. far this year so. yeah it's, it's so unusual still Iowa weather. Yeah. yeah if we can get through like another couple of weeks of pretty mild weather that'll kind of cut the heart out of it yeah i, I think hope so so you think if we like if february is kind of the worst of it well february march we've had some of the worst snowstorms in april Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, I mean, realistically speaking, we still could get snow for five more months. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the chances of that, given you know the current condition of our climate, is pretty small. But yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess when I think about the nastiest parts of winter, for me, often it's in regard to the cold. And yeah. It, it seems like just this is anecdotal, of course, but. In my memory, the coldest parts of the year are often, you know, January, February, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. end of so, January, February, and yeah. beginning of March, maybe. So, yeah, I mean, if we can get a couple of weeks into January and have it be pretty mild, I'll take that all day long. But I mean, for me, the big deal is if it's below zero, you know, when the car won't start, when I have to put my dog in a moon suit to go take a leak, <laughs> that's when it's like kind of a drag yeah. snow doesn't bother me so yeah. much exactly but. Well, now we used to play outside when they called off school because of the yeah. snow yeah we'd spend all day or because of the the cold you know? mm -hmm. windshield of 50 blows zero Who cares? Snow <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so dave you're originally from southern new mexico well yeah. i'm actually from northern new mexico northern new but mexico. moved from southern new mexico okay. and it's kind of interesting i'm sure like it takes a good six feet of snow for them to call off the first school or whatever. But down there, it's like, oh, it's an inch. No school. Yeah. <laughs> so which, which part of southern New Mexico, like the Marfa area or further west? Las, well, west of there, basically. Okay. Um, Love Marfa. Las Cruces. Okay. So, like, I don't know, 45 minutes west of El Paso directly, gotcha. basically. The desert down there is one of my favorite places. Yeah. It's pretty neat. No it's different. No allergies, huh? No allergies. <laughs> yeah. Why are they so? Or uh, tour of Roswell. Uh, I've done the whole Roswell done museum the alien, thing. Yeah, done the alien, uh, alien so highway. Are you a believer? 
Oh, oh, are we going to start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a whole can of worms. You on the spot. The conspiracy route. Here we go. I, I'm going to say yes and no. <laughs> like, I'm not, like, sold necessarily on the abduction end of it, necessarily. Although I find it intriguing and interesting. I'm not sold on it. But, like, I don't know. I've certainly... There's just way too much evidence. Probably some like, weird stuff going on there, I would assume. Like, when the U.S. Air Force has released those of jet fighters going, what is that thing, and stuff, like, I don't know. What are you supposed to say about yeah. that? I mean, there's just too much documentation of very weird things that don't seem to um, abide by our knowledge of physics, I guess. So, um, what about, you said you weren't sold on the abduction side of the story. What about it doesn't convince you uh i guess okay so i tend to be kind of so okay full disclosure i guess for all of our millions of listeners um (laughs) i uh so when i lived in phoenix i got kind of interested myself just because i've seen some weird things in the sky that are pretty undeniably weird um myself um and so I was sort of interested for that reason, and then I started reading probably a lot. And then, so I got kind of involved with that community down there, and you quickly realize there are a lot of people that are just kind of crazy. Yeah. They're, you know, you see purple haired, pink haired ladies that are like, oh, yeah, I talk to the aliens every day through my crystals or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and you just don't, you're like, yeah. eh, you realize that a lot of people are kind of. I'm not necessarily going to say they're liars, although there are those two. There are also people that are just kind of detached from reality or something, kind of loosey goosey with between understanding, like imagination and reality, and not really drawing a line there. Yeah, go, go ahead, Adam. Do you have something yeah. to say? Well, no, I, I was, I was just thinking that you know, kind of along those exact same lines. You know, traumatic things happen to people at certain points in their life, and you know, mentally they block it out, but they have to try to find a reason for it. So, you know, I could see somebody saying, "Well, the must have been aliens." Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, you know, um, have you? I mean, we've all seen Contact, I'm sure, right? Sure. That's um, with Jody yeah, Foster. Foster, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there's a line in there that says something along the lines of, you know, if the chances of life on a rock in the middle of a universe or a billion to one, then there should still be hundreds of millions of civilizations oh, yeah. out there somewhere. Statistically, sure. it's undeniable that there's probably some form of intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, but I'm on the... Uh, I I don't know. I'm kind of a denier that that intelligent life has ever visited Earth. I'm not sure if that's plausible, but I don't know. And would that be using an intelligence definition that would be similar to our own uh, the way we yeah. like, you know, yeah. look at our consider ourselves to be yeah. intelligent well, life? That's a right? very good point. Yeah. Yep, I, I would, would assume so. Yeah. Right. So. You know, well, just just the distances. Yeah, involved. it's just I mean, crazy. Like what? How? What's the diameter of the Milky Way? Like a hundred thousand mil- light years or something? Yeah. Or hundred one? Yeah, I don't. Just, I couldn't. Yeah. Tell you off the top of my head, but it's right. something crazy. And that's just the well, one the diameter of the Milky Way. It's it's like a couple. Is it like a hundred million light years or something? All right, let's look it up. We got the internet. <laughs> we do. Yeah. And then uh, I'm trying to remember back to the one astronomy class I had back at the University of Northern Iowa in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> The numbers are pretty. Here's the first thing that pops up. The numbers are pretty astounding. NASA estimates a galaxy at 100,000 light years across. Oh, that was way off. <laughs> Since one light year is about 9.5 times 10, 12 kilometers, so the diameter of the Milky Way is yeah, what it, insane. Regardless, yeah, and that's I mean, that's yeah. a galaxy. Right. right? Yeah, just yeah, just one galaxy. So. And then you think of, well, scientists now have speculated that they know the the, the diameters of our of the universe as a whole. And it's like 200 billion light years, and that's it. And growing. And growing yep. exponentially. Um, and it's actually growing at an ever-increasing speed each passing day, which is yep. which is cool. And what is it expanding into?
what are we bordering on that's sucking us in? Well, I mean, it's <laughs> the concept of nothing is pretty interesting as well. I mean, so space obviously is something, but if our universe is expanding, like you said, what's it expanding into? I mean, there has to be a, a vessel or a container, I would assume. But you know, if you if you take that line of of logic and reason kind of all the way to its you know conclusion, you know, planets down the road will talk about stars as a hypothetical. Yeah. Because they won't be able to see yep, them. Yeah, won't be able to see them. Isn't that crazy? Hmm, that is crazy. Anyway. Wow. However, <laughs> what I want to say is, like, we have a very, I mean, this whole idea, like, we can't wrap our head. There's no real explanation for why the, ex the universe is growing at an accelerating rate. There's no good, like, there's no explanation, really. So, I mean, that's a very fundamental question mark and to me it kind of underscores like well no matter what we opine about anything it's kind of like what you were referencing about our definition of intelligence like what does that even look like mm. i mean we we were gonna what we're talking about is something that looks like human intelligence but i mean there's a lot of arguments to be made that might say, well, are we really that smart? If you really think no, about it, no. I don't know. Uh, We've only had what oh, sixty thousand years, sixty to one hundred thousand years to evolve. So I mean, yeah. And it's to me, it's pretty clear there. There are some weaknesses or glitches in our programming that are kind of glaring and problematic. But uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, we have these like fundamental problems of physics that are pretty huge and like basic and so unanswerable unanswerable or at least unanswered yeah. which leads me to think that there's a lot of unknown Isn't unknowns the way of a lot of discovery science so you know every question that you answer creates 10 more questions that you yep. can answer or need to answer yep. for sure Man, I feel like we need to be we got really like, high level roles. listening Wait, to some yeah. Floyd or something in the <laughs> yeah, background. We should, Zeppelin. Sure. we should have eased in a little bit, yeah, for sure. Contemplating the depths of the universe. That's right. Dave, if you wouldn't mind like kind of talking a little bit about your background and your education and stuff like that. Everybody sort of knows the three of us. All, I mean, our limited viewership. So, But you're sort of a new guy, so would you mind kind of filling us in give us a cliff notes of cliff Dave. notes yeah. okay um all right so i got my undergrad <laughs> in psychology and music from unm which is in albuquerque and then i went off and did a bunch of little jobs doing all sorts of little things then i decided to go back i kind of fell into like environmental consulting I did that in the Four Corners area and around Phoenix. And How do you go from being a psychology and music major to environmental consulting? I don't know that I have a good answer for that. <laughs> All that I can say is that I kind of floundered and did some different things, and I sort of immediately realized that I didn't want to sit in a room and listen to people's problems for yeah. 40 hours a week. I kind of did some different things i worked in healthcare some and then i decided that i didn't want to be indoors all the time and um i sort of I, I took just a bunch of random classes here and there about all sorts of things and plants kind of i enjoyed being outside and i enjoyed science i always sort of did i was sort of saw my science direction one way or the other and so i thought being outdoors would be fun and then I got a job in the Four Corners area and just liked plants a lot. And, I, and truth be told, I had kind of a mentor in that area from growing up from way back when, and I sort of went that direction. And then then I went back and got a master's degree at uh, NMSU doing, in biology, doing this kind of microsatellite genetic work with a bunch of rare mustard in the mustard family in the whole west west um, from like idaho west into oregon and south into um 
California, the Sierra Nevada. You are so, a mustard connoisseur. Then, eh? A little bit, or at least one <laughs> tiny little <laughs> section of the mustard <laughs> family. I could tell you way more than you would ever want to hear. So, I know that mustard, the mustard family of plants includes a lot more than the mustard as we think of it. I mean, what, what other plants might we have heard of that are in the mustard family we may not realize? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> um, so there are a lot of them there. So... Oh, let's see. So, not to put you on horseradish is in the mustard family. Radishes are in the mustard family. Whoa! Yeah, and so actually, Dave, radishes are in the mustard family, huh? Yeah. Wow. And if you sit back and think, a lot of like horseradish kind of has that spicy, a little bit of spice to it. Yeah. Okay. And radishes have a similar. Mm -hmm. So often you can just tell the family if. I'm not advising this by any means, but if you take a little bite of the leaf or something, you can tell right away oh. often. Okay. Um, so things like broccoli, asparagus, cabbage, they're all different cultivars of the same species, mm -hmm. which is Brassica oleracea, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Mind-blowing if you think about it. So it's one species that has been sort of given the, the domesticated dog treatment. Sure. Sort of. We've just sort of bred That's all these different, oh, okay. different uh, varieties that would probably quickly disappear if they weren't, you know, yeah. controlled. They how they them and continue to right propagate them. Okay. Right. They would just sort of become. They would sort of dive back into a species mutt, <laughs> centralized crossbreed like a horseradish and a radish. Um. Maybe. I can't say for certain. I can say that plants in general have uh, a unique ability to crossbreed, sometimes not even from like across species, but across genera, from mm. genus to genus. It's a very... So plants can breed... Their breeding is much more plastic. Okay. So, and then, I mean, because I know you can't, you know, breed like, you know, your neighbor and the dog. Right, um, but with a plant family, you, you or with plants, you kind of can. S sometimes you can, okay. yes, and uh, it's plants are pretty trippy in the way that they can reproduce. They have much more plasticity. There are some species of plants that don't reproduce sexually at all. They're just clones, and that's the only way they reproduce. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, so it's kind of neat actually. There's a thing called mother of millions which is a species of plant that it's kind of a, you know, people grow them for, in their, you know, to put in their office window or whatever. And they're pretty, they're pretty neat plants, but they don't, they don't reproduce. They don't flower ever. They just um, make little babies on the edge of their leaves and they just fall off. Huh. That's and, interesting. Yeah. And I mean, plants are fantastic. What is the, the largest organism in the world? Isn't that an aspen grove out west somewhere? Or is it a... That is certainly one theory. There are some folks that think that actually fungi make bigger, but yes. Okay. In theory, that is my understanding that an aspen grove is the largest by mass That's single cool. organism. Hmm. Yes. And interestingly, they haven't reproduced by seed since the last ice age for whatever yeah. reason yeah they just well, cause I know when propagate by years from years later you've got 20 right they um, yeah they just propagate by you know roots they one tree kind of makes shoots out, and shoots and out another you know sucker 20 feet away and they just uh, expand outward like that so to trace back to the original aspen Thank so that yeah. can't do one that. common aspen <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, and something about, I, I don't remember, recall the details, but they have to be, the seeds are extremely picky to get them to germinate. They have to be like a certain cold or wet or dry or something. In other words, they never germinate unless. Mm -hmm. The conditions have to be just ideal. Right. And those conditions haven't been met since for thousands of years, That's basically. Yeah. Well, you know, with evolution, they have to find another way to continue along with the population. So. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. That's really cool. And so some plants, given depending on uh, depending on how they, it could be like you know, um, if they're under stress, they'll they'll just they'll reproduce, they'll self pollinate. Okay. So they're sort of 
uh, hermaphrodites. Mm -hmm. And then other times, if the conditions are right, they'll flower out and then they'll try to pollinate each other. Mm -hmm. So they can do a lot of different You're wacky things. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. You're the plant, I can tell man. you all about plants, man. And <laughs> they're like so strange. Like some some species will have only male plants and then only female plants, you know, and then some species will have like the male and female flowers on the same plant, but they're separate. So corn would be an example of that. Mm -hmm. And then some plants have the male and female in the same flower. Right. Yeah. Cause I, I know like some fruit tree, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm kind of dominating. No, no. go here. for it. Um, Cause I know some, some fruit trees, you know, some can self pollinate, but others, they have to have another, another tree of a different type in order to be able to produce fruit. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And then some plants, this is, you know, I, I mean, this was certainly true in the group of plants I was studying. Some plants will produce seed, but not even pollinate it. They just produce viable seed kind of immaculately. It's kind of like a <laughs> chicken produces an egg that's unfertilized. Right. But then, you know, it, a chick would come out of that. All even un Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Immaculate seed production. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So, <clears throat> go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah. Um, I know where you're going. If uh, you don't mind, I want to steer us into the GMO thing. So okay. last week we talked about, and the, the kind of the threshold question prompt we had was, should producers be required to label genetically engineered foods? So the background there is, you know, Currently, GMO foods in the United States are not classified differently by the FDA mm -hmm. and do not require labeling. And there's no reports of ill effects from GMO foods that have been documented, but ag advocacy groups like Greenpeace and the Organic Consumers Association argue that past studies cannot be trusted. They were sponsored by pro-GMO companies and do not measure the long-term effects on humans, the environment, and nature. Mm. Opponents argue that labeling adds an unfounded stigma over organic foods and that if a nutritional or allergenic difference were found, current FDA regulations would already require a label. So could you kind of walk us through the basics of some of that? I am pretty perplexed by... And let's talk about the other argument. I mean, you know, people have been genetically modifying things for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds That's of years. That's very true. You know, ever since the... I can't remember his name, you know, genetically modified that bean 100, 150 years ago, or maybe not that long ago. You know, we've been we've been altering things for a long time. Um, so, yeah, I'm curious to see. Can we start maybe from the beginning? Can you let I'm sure you probably can. Can you walk us through like and explain it like it's like we're five, how <laughs> to genetically modify something like what what are the steps in that process and, yeah and then like what oh. constitutes a gmo too that yeah. i mean that can be a little perplexing so i can't i i don't know much about the exact like protocol for how they do it i what i do know is that they'll often do things like use viruses and cook up like viruses are pretty neat often they can that's exactly what they do is they will insert their own DNA into a strip of DNA and then, you know, cause a cell to f proliferate itself, right? It's their own DNA within the DNA strand that's like... It's like a virus in humans. Right, right. And so they can use viruses, kind of, they can sort of hijack that viral technology um, to inject other DNA, for example. Um, something, for example, say you may have... I don't know, glow worm genes to make, you know, your tomato plant glow or whatever. I don't I don't know much about the exact science. I do know that that is one way that I know of. And now, you know, so that they have this viral technology where they kind of just hijack what the virus can do and they can cr it'll steal DNA from some other source could be anything it could be um some bacterium could be from a snail could be from you know any source really mm -hmm. and 
uh, they've been able to do some pretty cool things with that. Or maybe from another plant. Right. So. Okay. Um, Actually, yeah. there's a couple comments in our stream. I think, I don't know who this is, but Eureka Morrison thought the scientist might have been Mendel for the original bean. Oh, um, yep. that does that not from sixth grade biology. Yeah. Mrs. Right. Dirty. <laughs> so Mendel figured out he figured out that there are recessive and dominant traits sure. basically oh, the Punnett squares right exactly oh, the Punnett the squares, squares. <laughs> they're not that bad really yeah. but you I'm might have thought so in the seventh grade. grade yeah yeah so he didn't genetically modify anything he just figured out that you know if you mate either a heterozygous you know it's got the mix of the dominant Pat, um, regressive, re recessive traits that you may get a certain proportion that have both recessive traits, and then you get like a wrinkled pea instead of a you know supple yep. green pea or something mm -hmm. like that. Yep. I there's a well, I'll save that for another conversation. That's more natural selection than it is uh, <laughs> genetically all organisms. But um, so GMOs, what? Uh, What's our consensus here? I'm I'm too ignorant to really formulate an opinion. I'm more political than anything on this mm -hmm. GMO subject, so I it's hard for me to make a scientific argument for or against. I have I have very limited knowledge, but I have just enough to be just stupid about it. <laughs> um, so I mean, I've read a couple books. Like uh, Grain Brain is one where they um, talk about how we've taken you know, wheat, the, you know, one of the basic of all human cultivated crops, and um, essentially genetically modified it so it, it produces a much higher yield without any consequence to the reduction in the nutritional quality of it. And so that's why we have so many issues now with things like, um, well, like, you know, wheat belly or... Um, um, the gluten and celiac, disease. celiac disease. Celiac You're disease. looking at them. Um, have you read Grain Brain? No, I have celiac disease. Well, you should read Grain Brain. Yeah. It's just an interesting yeah. um, thing. You know, so, it's, like, you have diagnosed diagnose, celiac yep. disease. It's they, not common. They actually. went up and I got the blood test. And uh, um, for our sensitive viewers, I had the scrape of the intestinal wall. So... It was it was confirmed, but it's uh, my dad has it too, as does my brother. So it's hereditary. But um, hmm. yeah, I get I get kind of annoyed when people are oh I'm gluten sensitive or something. You know, I'm like wow. Well, that's become <laughs> that's become kind of it's kind of like fashionable yeah, in yeah, a yeah, sense. Trendy. I'm not going to say that it's not a real thing. I don't know. I don't think it is. <laughs> There's like trendy is the right word to use yeah. because when when they started talking about people with gluten sensitivity and celiac disease, all of a sudden I knew 50 people who had it. Yeah. Mm. Um, when I'd never heard them complain about you know eating it's, a slice of pizza. Celiac disease is different week. than yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Celiac disease is diagnosed. Like that's a bona fide yep. like. Yep. It's unquestioning. A... Like that's yeah. oh, I've that's been around him when he gets it gluted is the word. You get gluted, oh, it's awful, huh? Isn't yeah, it? it's like it's like I need to go home now. Driving <laughs> eight miles an hour home through yeah. Superior. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you drink beer? Nope. For example, no well, beer. There's, there are some gluten-free beers. I think they make it from what, um, rice. Rice, yeah. The rice protein is um, fine, and then uh, like hard ciders you can drink. Sure, but yeah, um, mostly you know I stick to your. So, like, Quite even the use. most minute quantity of wheat will send you on a glute yeah, yeah. freak out it's not or good. illness it, it's or not good. episode, right. I guess, is yeah. the word. So mm. There are some some levels of intensity, like, I, I hate to use the word sensitive, but some celiac people have kind of a higher tolerance, whatever they, like, towards how much intake they can, they can take of, of mm. the protein, but... Um, I'm kind of right on the edge where if I have like, I don't know, if you were to offer me half a sandwich of just regular bread and I ate it, I'd probably, I'd, I'd be going home in about 15 minutes. <laughs> you, you would pay for that sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would definitely would. Hmm. But there was actually a supplement 
you know, I just thought maybe, you know, just maybe I could take this supplement. It was one of those gimmicks that you see on Amazon or something, some ad that pops up on your screen. And so we ordered it and it's like a gluten, uh, gluten digest is what it's called. And so I took, I started eating some regular pizza again. And, um, I had my first Chinese meal in about three, four years. And then just like that, bang it's like game over so was it the same day that you ate the chinese yeah. food yeah no so what you're saying is it didn't work no <laughs> <laughs> and as as a science teacher i should have known better that uh those gimmick pills are just a rock so yeah yeah um no that was that was a poor choice but i do i do sympathize for all my fellow celiacs out there and not for those hollywood gluten sensitive people but mm. um Getting back to the GMO thing a little bit, um, just because I, I had a thought that I thought would be kind of fun to wrap up. So, you know, I, I, a big name when it comes to GMOs and crops is Monsanto and how they have genetically modified, you know, corn and beans um, so they are not susceptible to, is it the, the glyphosate salts? Gl glyphosate. Glyphosate. Roundup, basically. Oh, close. Yeah, Roundup. Yeah. Um, and so... You know, maybe not the, the genetic modification itself, but the results of the genetic modification. I mean, do we, do you know if we end up ingesting it? Does, does any of that chemical get into our food supply? Um, I can, I, I've read up on some of this, but I'm not going to like say, okay, I'm not going to pretend like I'm an well, we expert on that. But what I'm going to say is, <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course it winds up in your food supply. I mean, um, what I've read is it doesn't break down that quickly mm -hmm. in the environment. And so that means that it just winds up in the wa water supply. And now is that dangerous? That's another question. Maybe. Um, I have to say that. Okay. So if the question is labeling, I mean, broadly speaking, I think that labeling, there's nothing wrong with requiring people to tell you, you know, did we use a virus to cook up this particular, you know, like that's different than breeding, mm -hmm. right? Like wheat has been bred over thousands of years. And it's true. It's different than it was than if you were to, you know, dig up wheat from a thousand BC somewhere in the Fertile Crescent, right? It's different. It's going to be different. Now it's much beefier. Um, and it's going to have a certain yield and, uh, that's probably much higher than what they would have had back then. Um, it, you know, but to make something genetically modified to put up with a certain, you know, pesticide that's cooked up like on a commercial scale in a lab somewhere. So I, I personally think that that's more problematic and f more frightening is not so much the genetically modified, but rather what it's used for. Yeah. Because then you have all this cascade effects, right? You kill off God knows what else, mm -hmm. right? And then there's like the bees issue and pollinators issue and all these other things. And maybe people are sensitive and there are certain things that seem to be happening and nobody knows why, like autism and, you know, strange food allergies and sensitivities seem to be on the rise. Um, you know, and some of that may be trendy, but if autism were just like a, like a diagnosis trend, then you would see more diagnoses in older people. So I think that there's something more going on there. I don't know. I, I just kind of have, I feel like the real problem is not, genetic modification because sometimes genetic modification is fewer pesticides so for example like i'm a big fan of papaya i i don't know i just like papaya a lot and the fact that it's genetically modified means that i can afford it yeah. and it also means that they have to use fewer you know chemicals on it mm -hmm. it makes it more resistant to some disease in the tropics or whatever um so so that's a good thing, I guess. But this the monoculture, like, where you have basically one genetic, you know, phenotype and you just plant one huge field over it, field after field after field, I mean, that carries certain risks mm -hmm. that... 
that are real. And so I, I think that, you know, labeling GMO is not that big of a deal. But I do think that um, it's sort of when people are just like, oh, GMO is bad. And like, that's the end of the conversation. It's oversimplified and really like it misidentifies the real bad part, which to me is more like chemical use. So it's not the GMO itself, it's the indirect consequences of genetically modifying that organism or what for the purposes. <clears throat> right. Right. I Actually, that's exactly how I would feel about it, too. You said something in there, Dave, that I wanted to push on a little bit. Um, you made a, sort of a distinction between the use, like the using the virus technique, and it seemed to me like you were kind of calling that GMO as opposed to what you talked about, the breeding thing with wheat. Mm -hmm. So last week when we talked about this a little bit, we were having a hard time making that distinction because we weren't really sure what constituted a GMO in the first place. So, okay, I take my Honeycrisp apple and my Gala apple or something like that and mix them together and make a different kind of apple. Is that GMO then? It wouldn't... It, that's that's just breeding. That's just, okay, so it's controlled breeding, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, English cattle are actually aurochs, which are now extinct, right? And so they're much more docile. You know, mm -hmm. they don't have the big horns and stuff. Not well, bad. not as much, not right? Um, and so they've been selected to where they're right. basically. I mean, it's like if you look at a chihuahua, it doesn't look anything. I mean, it kind of looks like a wolf, but not, you would be you would probably laugh yeah, if somebody so said, "Oh, that came animals, from that." We're talking about basic animal husbandry, right? There's breeding. Breeding is a different thing than like making these, you know. And it, and then the other the other there's another element here in that, um, and I again, I'm not probably overstepping my knowledge on the matter, but. You know, for like Monsanto, they have their Roundup Ready seeds, and they're only good for one generation. So you have to buy their seeds year after year, and they have kind of this clamp of control over over that. And if you know, and there's all, I mean, so you're basically getting their one seed that you know. And so you, when when you start letting things breed, you know, sort of willy nilly, you can lose. Um, whatever traits that you were liked so much to begin with. So apples would be an example, really. You turned in back, you know, 150 years ago, you know, if you ever eat a crab apple, it's kind of bitter. Mm -hmm. You can kind of suck the juice out and it's kind of yummy maybe, or but it might be real bitter. And if you eat the flesh, it might make you sick. And so that's, so now they've, you know, it's so the, to make a nice, sweet, crunchy, delicious apple, you have to find a genetic type and then they just graft it over and over again. And that if it starts to interbreed with whatever else, then you might lose that. And so, um, you know, 150 years ago, apples for that reason were mostly used to make cider. They weren't, or to feed pigs. <laughs> like people didn't just pick an apple and eat it yes. so much. Um, it's been grafted and, you know, bred for that single trade and then they graft it over and over again so interesting yeah yep just like going from wolf to dog or yeah yeah or, or you know and poodle to labradoodle i think we, labradoodle, yeah. we golden that, doodles yeah. golden doodles yeah, yeah i think we were making some of those analogies yeah but the virus thing i mean to me it, it, the, the lay person here sounds more mad scientisty sure sort of than what i thought and it, so, I, I can I can see why people would maybe be a little bit have sort of a knee jerk reservations to to that kind of thing as opposed to what I thought was GMO with just simple breeding of plants, but that's not the case yeah. from what I'm gathering, learning from you now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Although you know, breeding plants, just breeding, like I said, you know. Brassica oleracea is like, you know, it's cabbage, it's kale, it's Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and uh, cauliflower. It's all one species that has been, you know, a, a, it's, you know, the analogy would be the wolf. You get all these different, everything from a chihuahua, but they're all wolves, mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of. Um, I don't know. So, 
But is that problematic? I don't think so. I mean, that's just people selecting traits, right? What do you... So part of that question, too, was that there had been no, like, ill effects reported or something from the GMO. What did I say exactly? It was... Help me out here. Oh. Well, I don't have a... Mm. I don't have memory, so I don't know. Yeah. I th- yeah, well, I, I know th- what you're getting at. I mean, it's- yeah, I, th- I thought it was something along the lines of although there had been no like side effects or something, right. but mm-hmm. they, they, then the argument was, oh yeah, but the studies were funded by by yeah the GMO by mm-hmm. the GMO yeah. companies, and that do you have a take on any of that at all? Or well, I certainly think that a study funded by some corporation is going to be suspect. I mean. If you get your money, I mean, that's there's a word for that. That's conflict of interest, right? Yeah. So, yeah, just on its face, it would be... <laughs> it's sort of obvious to me very, that... You'd be, you should be skeptical of it. I that think. any science that's yeah. funded by some company that's looking for an answer, well, if you don't give them that answer, they'll find someone who will, right? Well, it's just like the sugar industry was the one who said that fat was bad in the 50s. And so we made everything fat free and added sugar to to fix the taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, how long have we been eating GMO products, though? I mean, it, I, oh man, good question. How do you, how do you I think probably them? like the seventies is okay. my guess. Maybe the eighties. So I mean, not sure. You know, when we're when we're talking about GMO, I'm. You know, we have been genetically modifying things. For hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, that's what husbandry is. That's what selective breeding is. That's what, I mean, where where do you draw the line that, oh, no, this is not selective breeding. This is a GMO. I mean, just because we use science to maybe, maybe focus in and target on a smaller part of the picture. I mean, is, is that what we call a GMO? Because, you know, now that we can, we can take DNA and splice it in, does that make it... A- I mean, really, that's what we were doing before. You know, that's what we've been doing for hundreds and hundreds of years as we we're cultivating crops, as we we're doing animal husbandry and all that kind of stuff. So what do you define as GMO in the way that this liberal population is so afraid of it? I mean, that, that's kind of a big question. Yeah, I mean, I think time will tell, too. I, it, I, have, I have a tough problem, with, or I have a... Tough, um, tough time grasping the idea that uh, yeah, I've been alive for 28 years. I've probably been eating GMO products for 28 years, and I don't know. I mean, I, I guess <laughs> I don't know. I, it's part, like I said, a lot of it's political for me. I just I have a problem with um, throwing. A label on something like this is genetically modified and then God, it's hard to make this point <laughs> what can I compare it to um, are you sort of getting it like if it turns out to not be that big of a deal then why are we putting a label on it right in the first place right and Coming like I, my in-laws are all farmers, and uh, the seed industry is just mass. I mean, in the agriculture industry, like you said, you have to buy new seed each year. You can't just you know replant the seed that mm-hmm. comes with it. Yeah, he, the not plant, even, so. if you if, if sorry to interrupt no, you real quick, but I've looked at a few of those legal agreements that you have to sign when you buy that seed corn, and it's like. Yeah, if you think crazy. of you know mortgaging your house is bad, yeah, mm-hmm. it's take wild. a look at a Monsanto seed deal because yeah. they'll mm-hmm. come at they'll send like guys yeah. in black suits and come after you. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I have yeah, I've seen some of those um, documentaries too, and they're I mean, is that I, I honestly don't know. I assume there is a level of truth to it. I don't know what level of truth that is, but I you know, as with everything nowadays, when I hear something, I'm automatically skeptical a little bit. Mm. Um, I mean, do they do that? Well, you're. Have you heard of any farmers around here being attacked by Monsanto because, you know, they were not using a genetically modified crop and some pollen came over on a windy day? And yeah, no, I haven't heard about anything like that anecdotally. No, I think. But yeah, I, I, I don't know if a lot of people plant Monsanto 
crops around you. I'm not sure. Um, there's a lot of other uh, regional dealers that are pretty big. I think that are are locally that like farm and pioneer and back and decalb decalb yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. That I know more farmers around this area like to go locally than than um, you know bigger business like Monsanto. But I wouldn't be surprised with the company that size and and the amount of money that goes into that stuff that they. I mean they they take that stuff pretty seriously. So. Yeah. Well, that's just it. They put all that expense into it, so they want to protect their product mm-hmm. to the greatest extent yeah. that they can get away with. And I mean, okay whatever you don't have to buy from them and furthermore they're publicly traded and so that means that they're going to protect their profit margins to whatever extent they can get away with under the law or perhaps beyond so you know and when we when we get to the when we think about you know gmos kind of the heart of the the issue i don't think that there's anything that we consume that is not genetically modified in some way shape or form or hasn't been for for a long long time so those organic grapes and those organic bananas and that organic beef and that organic everything that you are spending three times as much on in the grocery store is organic but it's genetically modified and has been for forever well there's more to organic than that right so like like that means that you're not so that it's genetically modified, but usually, almost always, the end makes something pesticide or herbicide resistant. So that means that they're using pesticides and herbicides, and those have not been used for that long, since the 40s, I think. There were no, you know, uh, commercially, there were no, like, mass chemically produced, you know, herbicides or pesticides or even fertilizers prior to that time. And so... This is relatively new, and those some of them do have the potential to build up in the environment. Oh, I, I don't know. With yeah, without a doubt, I totally agree with you on the pesticide issue and the chemicals and all that kind of stuff. But I guess my my thought is with the genetic modification. I mean, I don't think there's any way we can really get away from it. Oh yeah, with the the population we have to feed now. I mean, to go an all organic to try to get a yield to to just make ends meet on a farm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's. Hmm. Well, I think it's uh, it's. And I guess my point to that was, even if you're eating all organic, you're still eating genetically modified. Yeah. You're still eating genetically modified food, um, because you can't get away from it. Mm-hmm. It's just you know we have been you know cultivating and propagating these, um, these crops through selective breeding for so long. You know, no matter how far out of your way you go, you can't get away from it. Even if you're buying all organic, I guess was my point. Yeah, sure. I agree. So, yeah. Unless you have a time machine, right? Exactly. <laughs> or you hunt and gather. Yeah. But, but, I, but, I, but there is a difference. There is a difference from, you know, breeding your crops old school or breeding your dogs or your cows or your pigs. That's different than, you know, using some cooked up virus in a lab and mm-hmm. like, sure. you know, <laughs> pressure chambers and all this crazy right. stuff. That's a yeah. different thing. So you're right. Like, where do you draw the line? I mean, but that's that's sort of the big question for all sorts of things, right? It's like saying, you know, to use like an analogy, when you know athletes use all these different methods to improve their performance. At where do you draw the line, mm-hmm. right? Like. I think we there's some interesting the questions yeah. there. Like hyperbaric chambers have become now illegal by the Olympic Committee, which is basically you sleep in a chamber yeah. where that's like low pressure and low oxygen, and it Body boosts. It's a natural blood way blood. to increase your the density of red blood cells. Right? Cupping is well, that was a big fad a few years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Suction cupping. cupping. Yeah, everybody you're walking around with oh these my circular gosh. bruises right. all over. And, Just look terrible. Yeah. Or what the other thing is, or you take some drug that does it, which is like flat out illegal. That's yeah. performance enhancing. But these things do this exact same thing as if you know, if you're a runner and you go like train in the Himala- Himalaya, you're doing the same thing. It's the same. I like that analogy comparing um, PEDs to GMOs. That's kind of right. And then like you know, if Tiger Woods gets you know LASIK, is that cheating? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, I. I mean, 
you have, but you have, but lines. And most people would agree, I think, that some sort of lines need to be drawn somewhere, right? It's like, or or the age of consent, right? You have to just sort of draw a line somewhere and say that's yes. it. <laughs> like, yeah. it, there's always going to be like gray area, but lines have to be drawn somewhere. Yeah. Right. So should we answer the overall question? The label GMO be on. Yeah. Edible products. I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't I honestly don't think it matters one way or the other. I don't either. I think, you know, the the label of, you know, hey, this was grown pesticide free or, you know, these animals were not raised in a barn, they were, you know, grass fed. I think that has far more impact on our nutrition um and overall the road than just, you know, GMO on the label. Mm -hmm. That's me. So okay. Um so I guess the question was should it be required? for companies to slap this is genetically yeah, modified so. on yeah i agree I, I don't think it should be required i think maybe uh, the trend for this generation is to eat organic and all that stuff which is fine i mean whatever you want to do so i think there's a benefit to labeling it non-gmo you know yeah. organically grown so but to require that is um, probably a step over in my opinion but mm. So, Dave, do you fall in a? I yeah, I kind of have. I, I I feel like the jury's still out for me. Mostly, I think probably not necessary. Like the GMO to me, it's kind of like what they, those guys were saying. Like to me, the GMO is not really the issue. It's pesticides and herbicides, and you know. Yeah, I think cooked up fertilizers and stuff like that's far more. And so they're, they're, we already have that, right? The organic label yep. or non-organic yep. label and things. Mm -hmm. And yep. but on the other hand, what do you lose by requiring labels? I don't know. If you buy a bottled water, they have to put the nutrition label on it. And <laughs> is it silly and ridiculous, or or a pack of gum? Do I need to know that there's three calories in it? I I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> is the stigma bad enough to? For, uh, you know, for these labels and that, I, I, I haven't run into anybody, I guess, in my own life that has been that big of a spaz on no, and maybe not stuff is GMO. I mean, and maybe yeah. that's just where we, you know, our, our confinement here in Northwest you know Iowa. I mean? like, <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's <laughs> that. That is entirely possible. That yeah. this is you're right. This We're is in not our bubble here. So this is not like Santa Fe or yeah. you know <laughs> Santa Cruz or whatever. You know. I have. I've lived in enough interesting places where, yeah, there were people who did make a big deal about GMO stuff, and then, you know, they would buy their organic Honeycrisp apples or their, you know, whatever they're going to buy that's organic that is still, you know, modified in some way, shape, or form. I mean, yeah, I, people get crazy over it because, you know, somebody put in the news, hey, GMO's bad. Um, kind of like, oh, uh, what was that? Jim Carrey's wife, you know, the, the negative impact that she had had on, you know, vaccination. I, I, uh, yeah, vaccines. there are people that make, make it, <laughs> make it a bigger deal than it should be, but I, I don't think that one should be required. I think yeah. it's just, yeah, it's actually a few pretty good comments here in our chat. Um, Olbador says at the end of the day, people will buy what they can afford regardless. Um, well, that is a fact, Jack. I, yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, oh, for sure. Um, Some right. people all they can afford is you know McDonald's dollar cheeseburgers, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. You buy organic when you can afford it if it's important. Right. But you know, for that matter, I'm the same way. I'll buy what I, buy what I can afford. Yep. Well, yeah, that's. What, I was going to say something about that. I think a minute ago, it's like, well, you know, when I'm buying food, typically the first thing I look at is price tag, oh, and yeah. then I'll flip it to the nutrition facts and give a rundown yeah. and see, like, well, how many grams of sugar does this have? Do I really want? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing the price you know of of and this produce is absolutely crazy. I mean, <laughs> to buy a freaking bag of apples compared to a bag of yeah. chips. No wonder. Mm. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's wild. Mm. But Well, a big reason for that is chips have shelf life. It oh, can true. sit on the shelf yeah. for months, you know. Yeah. But a bag of apples is going to have a shelf life. That's very and they're going to have a lot of loss. Given yeah. the fact that, boy, I was watching, and I'm, 
correct? It was a story about a Michelin star chef in Italy. Um, I can't think of his name. He said we throw something like a trillion apples away every year. Hmm. And when we're throwing that much produce away, why have it be so expensive? It's cheaper for people to buy hamburger helper. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really, yeah. you know, it, isn't it, aren't the grocery stores better off knocking the price down a little bit, having everybody buy produce, as opposed to keeping the price to a point where they're going to be throwing sixty percent of it away? Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, it's, that would be a, a massive, massive undertaking to try and get our population to buy more produce. <laughs> but the the ethics is there for sure. Yeah, well, there's a lot there to consider. I think, I mean. Generally, I mean, grains are subsidized, produce, not so much, for one. And then there's water content, which mm. makes things heavier, right? Like potato chip is pretty much dehydrated. Air. Yeah, <laughs> right, it's air. <laughs> and it's got a much longer shelf life. Um, and so for those reasons, it yep. they're more profitable in a sense. Right. Whereas if they're out, if, you know, the stores out there just picking through stuff, things going bad or getting ugly or whatever, and they just end up throwing away half of what they bring in. Sure. Dave, there's a question for you in chat that says, um, what does it mean specifically when you say to cook up a virus? Ah, that's a good question. (laughs) And I don't have, there are a number of protocols and I don't remember them okay. off the top of my head. Good. But um, <laughs> there are ways to inject. And yeah, that I don't even remember I the name. A little bit and see if I'm close. Sure. Um, <laughs> so, you know, is it is it perhaps something along the lines of, you know, taking, you know, taking a virus like a, a plant virus and extracting a portion of its DNA um, and splicing that into something else or well and then I, if I were if memory serves again so this like is like splicing different DNA you can take different viruses. so so and then maybe and then another way I think that they can actually use bacteria as well okay. so bacteria are interesting in that they can pass DNA just like here have some DNA and the other one's like, oh, thanks. Here, have some of my DNA. And it's not like sexual or any way, anything. They, so viral DNA is in these rings called plasmids, mm-hmm. or at least some of it. And they can literally just hand them off to each other. And that's part of the reason why bacterial um, resistance and viral resistance is so much, is so fast. Mm-hmm. Like they can become resistant to treatments and drugs very quickly Um, or even to things like temperature or various stresses Um, and so you can these plasmids like they can hand off the DNA that way and so you can kind of I'm not sure you can kind of sneak attack the bits of DNA and these plasmids across and then you know you can I don't remember. I don't, uh, remember. And there's a lot of really cool stuff on the horizon. There's like CRISPR technology that everyone's both excited and terrified about. It's basically this protocol. I don't know that much about it other than to say that it's extremely, you can use it to literally splice out a bits, gene, and ch- bits and pieces, and pieces and very specifically with a very high rate of success. Okay of DNA from here to there, from this to that, and that it you can use it across all forms of life and that it's just Man, super how how crazy would that be? I mean if you can just pick and choose the traits you want. Well and that's a whole nother oh, like man. that's a whole nother ethical question is like designer babies yeah. and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Well, let's not get started on designer yeah. babies because that's Yeah. So yeah. amazing. Be interesting to see what the next hundred years is gonna be like. A little yeah. scary. Yeah. A little scary. Yeah. So I'm yeah. sure it was 100 years ago too. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I mean, I feel like the 50s was scary because of nuclear holocaust was this very real sort of front door, and that's still there. But now we've got all these other crazy things to worry about, like 
you know, how bad is climate change going to be? Is it going to be apocalyptic or are we all just, you know, freaking out for no reason? Who knows? I don't know. Or is it a natural cycle that the earth is going? Yeah. Uh, or, yeah. So there's question number one. And then you've got, you know, <laughs> what about AI and like nanotechnology and oh, yeah. the anyone biological the, revolution, for, you know, cr with CRISPR and all these other things. Did anyone catch the Elon Musk interview with Joe Rogan? When he smoked dope? Yeah. That was pretty dope. That was very interesting. I, 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 I'm a big Elon Musk fan. I, I, I like him too. I, he's... Yeah. He's just a bizarre cat. He does his own thing. Yep. And, you know, he is, you know, the technology, the, the battery technology that he has could be revolutionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really like the uh, independence from NASA that he started with SpaceX. I think that just takes space exploration in a whole new frontier. That's just, uh, especially if it's not reliant on the government, which... Yeah. Nothing seems to work. That's huge. <laughs> so let's talk about something. How long has SpaceX been around? Oh, God. Uh, I'd say less than... 10, 15 years. Tops. Less than 20 tops. years. How yeah. long has NASA been around? Uh, since the 40s? 30s? 40s? Probably 40s? since Sputnik, I think. Yeah. Who the, yeah, that so was like 50, yeah, yeah, something, something right like that. Yeah. So, you know, they, and if you haven't seen these videos, they're absolutely freaking lootly incredible. You know, Elon Musk and his, you know, team of magicians have been able to fire a rocket from Earth out into space, turn the rocket around, shoot it back, spin around, and land on a moving platform yep. right. in the ocean. Yep. It's absolutely phenomenal. Right. They can they can they can do it. it it's like a freaking ballet. You know, they can do two rockets at the same time, have them come back and land perfectly in sync. It's just incredible. The the level of the engineering involved is yeah. it's uh, crazy. I think they have plans for Mars in 2021. Is the last estimate I heard. I think it's going to be a one-way trip, though. But um, hmm. so, would you want to be one of those people on the one-way trip? Um, no, not at this point. No. Hypothetically, yes. We'll ask yes. you again after the baby. Yeah. Comes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh God! Please. <laughs> one weekend. I'm to get out of this one. One weekend, I'll send Elon a tweet and volunteer. So SpaceX was 2002. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, six yeah, years. yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that something? I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, and I think that's we touched on this. At least I know I was present for that one. Um, I, I think the private enterprise getting into this the space travel thing it's space exploration oh it's is, it, is massive yeah, yeah. huge huge mm -hmm. i think there's a uh, the u.s budget is like 116th or 164 uh percentage of a penny goes to the nasa budget it's something create of every tax dollar but mm -hmm. um it's something crazy Makes like that cool, but yeah, right. do we uh, want to use this opportunity to talk about um space force Sure. Space Force. Sure. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, the government. We haven't heard much yeah. about that if lately. If it worked for my bad knee, I'd be enlisting. Yeah. Right now. My bone spurs are getting to me. <laughs> yeah. Do I get to wear a stormtrooper outfit? Yeah. <laughs> Space Force. It's gotta be a cool anthem for that or something. Yeah. American flag in the background. You know, Trump's in his astronaut hat or something. That'd be, that'd be sweet. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, is it that dumb of an idea though like if you think about the way uh asserting your military might like the next frontier right. is... i think i think the way it was presented was comical yeah um especially with our current president right yeah. now well, <laughs> to announce yeah. the space force but i think the idea or the justification that uh, we should have a um, presence in um you know space or or an orbit around earth i don't think that's too egregious um do i do i feel like we need to dedicate trillions of dollars to it <laughs> not yet well let's think about this from another direction um you know we know that we know that earth has problems we know that we are for lack of a better term seriously fucking up our planet um we are overpopulated we are polluting pretty much everything that we touch and everything that we don't um we know that Earth has a finite lifespan. We know that at some point our sun is going to become a red giant and swallow our planet. 
Um, if humans want to remain in existence, we'll have to figure out how to get off this rock sooner or later. Yep. I mean, you know, and, and I know it, it sounds silly. I know it sounds like we're talking about, you know, Star Trek or Star Wars or, you know, what's that new great um, Seth? Uh, oh, Orville? Is yeah. That, yeah. You know, we, we have that stuff and we, we think of it in such a, you know, fantastical, sci-fi, comical manner that when we start talking about it seriously, of course it's going to catch some flack. But, I mean, are we to the point where, you know, it's going to take us – gazillions of dollars and a lot of so much scientific time and energy that you know we can't even fathom to figure out the technology to get away from this place yeah you know when is it too early to start dabbling into our in into our neighborhood yeah no oh, it's got to be funded first for sure um I mean, is you know i know that we're looking at you know several hundred several thousand years down the road that we need to be off our rock yeah well several thousand tens hundreds of thousands millions maybe um, but you know, is it wrong to start exploring our neighborhood now? No, oh, I'd I'd be all all for it. I think the uh, um, the past is a good, or we uh, you know history repeats itself. The human species has a pretty big problem for planning for the future, in my opinion. I don't do uh, too good of a job of. Um, I don't want to say this. Uh, Oh, uh, let's take climate change for example. You know what are we doing? Uh, nothing. Yeah, I mean, what, basically nothing. There's that old adage: if you're not, well, uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't say nothing. I mean, you know, we have up in our cars that turns our car off for a split second. At yeah. The I mean, we're doing something, right? That's impactful. Yeah. That's impactful. <laughs> well, let's okay, but, but let's, car. but let's, <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about it, so. There was a report, uh, some report that came out that said that our cli our use of our our the worldwide production of climate emissions, climate change emissions, is steadily going up mm -hmm. from one year to the next. So, in other words, we're not doing better; we're doing worse. Yeah. Well, and it's, I mean, for, well, I mean, we have, you know. So the United States has sort of been like the golden star of like what to aspire to worldwide as far as development. Well, that means more cars. That means more electricity. That means fossil fuels, right? And as long as that's true, that means more and more people are going to be working in that direction mm -hmm. all over the world. And that's bad for climate change. I mean, that's that's kind of a bad omen. Yeah. yeah. So when I say that yeah, that's cool. More people are turning off the lights when they re leave the room. That's cool, but that's like peanuts. It's yeah. like a drop in the bucket. <laughs> it's like yeah. a drop in the yeah, exactly. It's like throwing a growing grain of sand on our southern border to start building a wall. Yeah, yeah it I just think, seems sort of yeah. I think it was about ten years ago that scientists said, you know, two degrees Celsius. If you go up two degrees Celsius, that's kind of the tipping point mm -hmm. where things are going to start hitting the fan and now every every projection that i've seen that i've read is 2.1 2.2 yeah. degrees and it's it's yeah. like it was predicted now so is an inconvenient truth yeah i mean yeah there's some really scary things that could happen mm -hmm. if yep. you have like an ecological collapse in the oceans well that means the fisheries are gone and a lot of people eat fish and a lot of animals eat fish I, and that's I, scary. Well, and let's talk about the you know coral's contribution to you know cleaning our air and yeah. oxygen. Right, and then so there's yeah there's coral another bleaching. question. You have the coral reefs bleaching all over the world, and I uh, I don't know. We always I I teach eighth grade science right now, and we always have this huge climate change unit, and you know it's fascinating to watch the kids like I, I show them this little demonstration where you know if this coastlines would just um, decrease by like 100 feet so you know there goes florida yeah i mean just it's watch gone. how many people are displaced and i ask him you know where where's the population live primarily uh, on the in, coasts in, yep in in the united states and in other countries oh i don't know i mean we live spirit lake's got a lot of people minneapolis no, <laughs> think, about think about it sounds like eighth grade yeah, yeah. it sounds about yeah. right yeah yeah no and yeah. then they kind of get it and then they see the you know the the shoreline shrink and 
And we get to another question, well, where are all these people going to go? You know, well, they're going to start moving inland, okay? So what's that going to do? It's going to reduce the amount of space you have to grow food, okay? What happens if you don't grow enough food? People are going to get cranky, right? Yeah, so it's just, it's fascinating to watch how 13 and 14-year-olds can kind of understand it, but not people who legislate. So I... I don't know. I don't see the controversy. I guess is my, is my. Uh, controversy. Right. I, yeah. I, well, I don't think there should be a controversy at all. Either. I think yeah. that speaks to a corrupted political system yeah, more than I anything. Think that's right along the same lines as flat earthers and you know, <laughs> hollow earthers. You know, and I'm a believer in Jesus, but you know, I, I, there's a lot to evolution. You know, I, I'm not a creationist. Mm. Um, you know, I, I kind of put those in the same. The same area. Yeah, I'm curious. How do you handle evolution in your class? And how? I'm actually teaching it right now. Are you allowed to teach evolution in Iowa? Yep, we have to. I'm kidding. I know. Do you get oh. resist? <laughs> do you get resistance from the? I have in the past. Really? Yeah. Yep. Let's I've... talk about that. So I've had not. To, I'm not going to mention no, names, okay. but um, <laughs> you know, I've I've had assignments where um, actually I've shown the video. I don't know if you guys are probably familiar with the peppered moth. Sure. That adapted because of the uh, industrial revolution. Yeah. Um, literally changed its color because of the soot on the trees. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it changed from, it was a white moth and then adapted to the black soot so it wouldn't get... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then, then they cleaned it up and yeah. went back. Yep, right. yep. yep. Um, so I just had him watch that simple video. And of course, it, it was tagged um, evolution by natural selection or something. And then I had a parent, a kid email me, I can't watch this. I don't... Or, my family doesn't believe in evolution or something like that, or it's not, it's against my religion. So I had to go through all the formalities and I sent home this huge letter that was just saying, you know, evolution is simply how things change over time. It's not how things got here. I don't care what you believe in. You can believe in whatever you want, but I'm going to teach you how things change over time. And that seemed to clear it up for the most part. We just started it this year, so we're still. You know, I'm still going over like the geologic time scale with them, so we're not quite to. Yeah. In and of uh, itself, could be problematic for a lot of folks. Sure, like yeah. we're talking um, 4.6 billion years ago, and not 5,000 years ago when the Earth yeah. was formed, right? So, um, but no, it's it's pretty smooth this year. We haven't gotten into uh, speciation yet, but um, we will, and I'm sure I'll have to answer those questions I have to every year. But mm. um, there. They're at an age where they're starting to kind of think outside the box a little bit, where they're seeing that, um, um, you know, a bat's wing is homologous to your fingers, your fingers right? Yeah. So they can start to see that stuff. And um, now I think they're kind of starting to challenge the idea that, hey, it's not just right or it's not just wrong because so-and-so says it's wrong, right? But... Um, it's interesting. It's fun to watch, really, as a teacher, but uh, um, there is still some resistance, and it's just ignorance is all it is. So, mm. Pretty easy to clean up. But. Sounds to me like you're just a hippie trash propagandist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leftist trying to spew yeah. my progressive views <laughs> on the youth of our nation. Yeah, that's me. Oh, man. <laughs> Figured me out. I can't believe it's not settled like we're the only country in the world where it's not just like settled like i just ugh. well so. we were talking about that if i don't mind me cutting you off there kyle a little bit um last week i think maybe like the the frontier with everybody's gripe about like the common core standards oh, yeah. and that in education it, like it's all in the sciences right pretty yep. much. i mean nobody's yep. bitching about shakespeare yeah in or English class or pythagorean you know theorem I mean? yeah, yeah right so it so, it's yeah it's um science uh, science really is being treated kind of more like a humanity than it is a science in the school systems and that um more and more people seem to see science as subjective rather than objective which is the biggest hurdle i have to try and um, fight through in my mm -hmm. job but uh, you're right. I 
I have my own opinions on Common Core and standards and all that good <laughs> stuff, which I will reserve for a different time. But hmm. um, you know, that's the biggest thing is just trying to make make kids understand that facts don't care about your feelings. Mm -hmm. True. Facts don't care about what you believe in personally. So. Yeah. And the First Amendment doesn't care about your facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had to bring that up. Is, that the, that's true. And that's statement. that right there is something that I feel like is a big it's a issue like right now. Like that's a big like the First Amendment like there's no quality control. There really isn't. No. About what people say and what people can claim as a and fact. People report. But, yeah, but, you but can't lie they're... to the FBI, right? Okay. Or you go to jail. Like that's pretty cut and dry. But anybody else can say pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. And but well, yeah, shouldn't you be able to? I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> it just goes to show no matter how full of shit you are, somebody will listen to you. Mm. And they will yeah. believe you. And they will spread your doctrine across the nation. Mm -hmm. well, that's what we're trying to do on this podcast. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no. I like it. Educate the people. Yeah. That's right. If you play it backwards, it tells you to kill your parents. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. It's a little disclaimer. It doesn't. <laughs> Just yeah. All the well, this yeah, propaganda. That, the, the First Amendment conversation is always an interesting one. It, it, it sounded to me, Dave, like... I don't want to put words in your mouth or anything, but are, are you a person that would think that there should be maybe more restrictions on speech or how do you feel about that? It's a good question. And I, well, the first thing I want to say is there are restrictions on speech, right? There, if you're, you know, if you have, I mean, if you don't believe that, you could ask, you know, Chelsea Manning, right? Like, yep. <laughs> like there are restrictions on yep. speech. You can't yell fire in, in a, a theater, theater yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. There are some rules. Do I think well, that there should... You can, though. I mean, you can say that. You yeah, could. but it, you know, I guess it would... To... But it exposes you... Right, to cops. Criminally, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it's for not sure. protected free yeah, speech. Yeah. Right. You can say the B word on a plane, and there are all sorts of things that I could say about a president <laughs> that could get me arrested tonight. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, that's true. Adam's so, got the tapes. Fill us in. Fill us so, in. I mean, yeah, there, there are, without a doubt, restrictions on our speech. Maybe the wrong kind of restrictions. Maybe the right kind of restrictions. Maybe I think maybe there should be, like, there used to be this thing called the Fairness Doctrine back in the day that Reagan kind of quashed that said that there has to be some kind of standard of truth in news, right? And I think that is maybe not a bad idea. Oh, like, sure. I mean, so let me let me just the media uh, read the quick <laughs> definition of the fairness doctrine is a formal um, federal policy in yeah is a former federal policy in the U.S. requiring television and radio broadcasters to present contrasting viewpoints on controversial issues of public importance. Um, let's see. I wonder if it went away somewhere. <laughs> so does that just sound like a, rather than just opinion journalism sort of, that you have yeah. the <laughs> counterpoint as well? I mean, is that how we wound is, up with the six talking heads on the screen at one time? Everybody yeah, I don't know. Each other? Maybe. Well, FCC eliminated Maybe. the policy in 1987 and removed the rule that implemented the policy from the federal register in August of 2011. So, yeah, it was uh, hmm. Reagan's last year in office that that was removed. Yeah. <laughs> and then removed from the federal register under uh, Obama. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, that sounds really good that everybody should report the truth and facts, but it doesn't necessarily make you money at the end of the day. Well, and there's another issue, right, that that information is doled out for profit instead of as a public service. Or an agenda. It's, it's an entertainment. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, entertainment. The news industry yeah. is an entertainment industry. It's not an informant. But it didn't always be. It wasn't always that way. No, it wasn't. And I think Wrong. That, <laughs> well. Wrong. You're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> But you, you, there was a point where we could rely on... When I'm elected, you'd be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> there was a point where we could rely on our news to give us the news and, and 
it, it was relatively close to accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we, you know, had reporters that uncovered all sorts of legitimate scandals, you know, back in the, you know, sixties and seventies and the eighties. And, you know, now every time you turn around a reporter is claiming that they've uncovered a scandal. Right. Or everything is a scandal. Or everything is a scandal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I find it hard to believe that something like Trump could have ever happened if there wasn't something like Fox News. Like, I just. I, you'd be I don't know. How many people stopped listening to Fox News during the. You know, back when. Way back when, as if it was a long time ago, yesterday. Um, you know, when. When, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say when politics started to get vicious because it's always been vicious. But when the news got involved and the news started to, you know, really pick sides, pick sides, and you know, and report the facts that they wanted to present to support their you know pre-existing ideas, um, you know, when that started to happen, a lot of people who are you know are were mainstream conservative stop listening to Fox News. Because, you know, you have the bullshitters like, you know, Sean Hannity and, you know, all of his little minions on there. Um, it, it got so right-wing and so crazy. I mean, I used to listen to Fox News. It used to be a legitimate news source. Now it's just a right-wing propaganda machine. Um, same thing can be said for MSNBC. CNN and MSNBC yeah. and CBS for, you know, the, the left side. If you want news, you go to C-SPAN. If you want news, <laughs> you know look out of our country to yeah. get real news. Yeah. It's just, um, I forgot where I was going with this point, but um, I, I don't know. I Trump is going to be a very interesting read 40 or 50 years from now when we have had the time to really take a look at what drove our culture to elect somebody who is not a politician as our president and what the results are going to be of his presidency because we're not, and, honestly not going to know what kind of a president he is for 20 or 30 years. Well, and a, I mean, and a, uh, a candidate such as him. I mean, he's not your normal non-politician presidential candidate. No, I mean, he's, he's not your Ross Perot. He's, your, he's, not your, he's his own individual entity, yeah. that's but, which I think is why he's appealing nice, or was appealing. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> So there was a, another comment I did want to mention here from Eureka Morrison says, I teach biology in the Bible Belt, and I literally have people quote the Bible on every evolution discussion. Wow. So that's, oh, I, I'd like to, maybe she'll comment here again, but I'd like to know more about how she'd handle that because obviously I've never taught in the Bible Belt. We're not really in the Bible Belt here. Um, we're a little bit north of it, but um, it's got to be just a... You look confused, Jimmy. <laughs> well, wh where is the Bible Belt? Please? I would assume it's Mississippi, Alabama, Oklahoma. Mississippi, that... Alabama, yeah. Missouri. I mean, I would have guessed yeah. the South. Yeah. Arkansas, yeah. I would Arkansas, consider. Yeah. Arkansas um, goes out to, like, North Carolina, Tennessee. Yeah. Is it Noah's Ark in, like, Kentucky? Ohio, Kentucky. Yeah. Ken yeah. Oh, it's in Kentucky. The, the museum <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. 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 Ken Ham, I think, world, trying to teach biology or evolution in a in a... You know, a deep red state like that. Well, there, there are so many reasons I couldn't be a teacher in a. And but I mean, if even if you have like an administrator, if your principal is, you know, half a step away from being a preacher, what do you do too? I mean, that's yeah. I, I can't imagine. I'm glad. We're and up here. politically, how are you going to present your, right, right, your curriculum, right? Yeah, I, I mean, know. you got to be careful, but. There's uh This is only the opinion of scientists. Yeah. Only the opinion that yeah, based on opinion. 150 years of, you know, verified research from like a million different angles all pointing at the same anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, sorry to divert back to that. We were we were kind of on Trump there. That was a good discussion. <laughs> <laughs> it always goes back to him. Yeah. God. And, and, you know and I wish it did. It's you know, people just But he like, gives you so much to he does. Talk about. I mean, you know, if he would keep his mouth shut, <laughs> yeah. I think we'd have a lot less problems. With yeah. It. Yeah, no kidding. You don't need to clap back at everybody who criticizes you. Criticizes yeah. you, you know, on, on Twitter. On the other hand, he doesn't have anybody defending him either. So, yeah. Yeah. In, in, in terms of the news. <laughs> it's just, you know, maybe if I was in this position, I'd want to tweet what I think too. I, well, I don't know. If you think Sean Hannity is news, he's got or a defender there. Well, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Maybe he'll be the new chief of staff. We'll see. Level of I don't know. Have you guys? Unless he wants to sponsor our show. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take a sponsor. Hey, we'll go full right wing if we <laughs> have <right>. sponsors. <laughs> Follow the green. Yep. Everybody get a guy. Yep. So, sponsored by, I was going to say, sponsored by Smith & Wesson. Have you guys seen the, the news bias chart thing before? There's the... Um, yep. And yeah it's yeah it starts off like a, the handful and that are neutral and then leaning left or right and then hyper partisan and then garbage right i don't know <laughs> the way in you know, look at that, i don't know how accurate it is if you listen to the words that come out of people's mouths on stuff like npr or reuters or i mean reuters i think is right wing as far as they're concerned right uh i'm looking at one and this may not be I would, I would think the Reuters animal. is pretty fact based. Pretty yeah. yeah. This is exactly the one that so, I've seen. Reuters is, I think, right in the in the, in the economist, neutral zone. I used to get the Economist. Yeah, it is not neutral. Okay. <laughs> if you read the words that people are writing and can understand English, you know, they're it's, everybody's biased right now. Yeah. Except the National Geographic. Well, yeah, there you but go. even even the National Geographic is pretty pro environment and pro evolution and pro science. I don't know, maybe. And you know what you just said there, Dave, is something that I've always wondered about. Isn't it lame that like somebody rattles off a couple of general topics and then you like your brain automatically goes to left or right based mm. on just yeah. the, the mention of one you know you say environment oh left let's do it yeah let's yeah. do it pull up a list of topics spew them out and we'll see what we think yeah that's uh i mean and it's not really it's not really something you have to view about or stew about either it's just i mean you could you could do it in a split second you know, yeah. vaccines right <laughs> Like, well, that one isn't really like that partisan. Not, it's just I would say left. Dumb. Or, dumb. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's only an issue on the left. Yeah. Well. Mm, yeah, there's some writers. There's some people right on the right yeah. there. What are the arguments on uh, the? We've talked about this with Spurge a little bit. That, that vaccinating your children causes autism. Right. Thank you, Jenny McCarthy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, God. Yeah. We're listening to a Playboy playmate. For sound parenting advice, right? Yeah, no, that drives me nuts. I mean, cause or that there's they use some heavy metal in the production. I forget, I forget if it's lead or mercury or some nonsense. Yeah, I wish Spurgeon was here because he 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 uh yeah he knows his stuff he about vaccines. Yeah, he oh, yeah. um he's very knowledgeable about vaccines. But uh, he um he actually made a good point, like. You know, you're you're not only putting your own kid at risk if that kid gets measles or whatever, and he's got to be around some kid who right. has leukemia or something that can't get a vaccine. And what do they call that? Herd herd immunity. Herd immunity. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's just irresponsible and infuriating, actually. I mean, and it's true. I mean, here's here's the thing. Like, come on, it wasn't that long ago. Polio was a real thing for people to be very frightened of well, like there are people that are alive who had polio as yep. children right and yep. they're like in wheelchairs or iron Crushes. lungs or whatever right yep. and it's like that is a real thing that is gone yep. now you don't hear about a lot of smallpox so at least you didn't tell a lot of people stop vaccinating their kids yeah yeah i mean i've seen somebody with bumps or rubella mm -hmm. chicken pox chicken pox yeah. i know i actually got I chicken do. pox yep. yeah. But, but like nowadays, yeah, it's not even a thing. Go to your friend's house with chicken pox, yep. just like on South Park. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, um, want to get him young, sir. Does it make a difference in the vaccine thing if the disease is like a hundred percent preventable by the vaccine? You know what I mean? Like, so like, do you take the flu shot, for example? The, there's always a new flu coming out. And, right. Um, Why? Well, yeah. You know, the difference. There, I think, is, you know, there aren't as many variations in something like I think you're right. Smallpox yeah. as there is in influenza. I mean, you know, there are, you know, I had said hundreds, and Andy said, correct me, to thousands of strains of, of influenza. And, you know, what they do is they try to forecast what are going to be the most dangerous strains in a given year, mm -hmm. and that's what they protect against because yeah. they can't possibly immunize them against all of them. Right. 
I mean, it's like the common cold. You know, how many different you know viruses and stuff can cause the common cold? It's but we hold different standards for flu. Unless you're like in healthcare, you don't have to have a flu shot. You know. Whereas if you want to go to public school, there's a list that you have to yep. have yep. for vaccines. As you should. As you should. Right. Well, that that makes sense. If you don't want you don't want a vaccine, keep your kid out of you know keep your kid school away from that's funded else. out of the yeah. public coffers. Yeah, take it right. in the middle of the woods. Well, teach them, teach them yourself. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're that way. That's the to me. That's the best balance between somebody's liberty interest and saying, you know, no, I want to live my life like X or whatever. But yeah. the, you know, and but fine. But you're not going to be pulling out of the, yeah, out of the the tax uh, hmm. tax funds for everybody. Well, I think when it comes to vaccinations, it, the reason that the vaccinations are important is because now, if you don't vaccinate your kid, it's not just dangerous for your kid; it's dangerous for all the kids around them. I mean, just like mm-hmm. you said, the herd or the herd immunity issue, public a public health risk. Yep. But yeah, it's pretty frustrating. Um, Although I'm not sure that it's over if it's overstated the whole like movement against. I wonder if it's maybe overstated. I, yeah, I, you know, it's fizzled considerably. From yeah, where it used to from where it was ten years ago. Yeah. I think there's a few. Um, there's a few outspoken anti-vaxxers that kind of hog the limelight. Yeah. And I, I, and I think that's probably true for a lot of things like the flat earthers and stuff like, yeah, there are pockets of places where people lack common sense in that regard too. Sure. Uh, I just, Eureka teaches in North Carolina. Interesting. Mm. Mm, That's pretty biblical over there. Yep. Yep. I had a, well, our head basketball coach just recently moved from North Carolina. So, really? yeah. Nick Grookey, I don't know if you remember him. I was actually born there. Really? Yeah. Born in North Carolina? Yeah. Wow, Dave. But I've been a New Mexican. Been everywhere, yeah. North coast to coast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I consider myself, I mean, I moved when I was three, so. But, yeah, I, you know, I've always, for many years, I would visit family in North Carolina. Never and it's been. very... I still refer to it as the Confederacy. Really? You know? <laughs> it feels like the Confederacy in a lot of ways. So that's like southern Missouri and northern Arkansas. There are pockets there where they're still fighting a war. Yeah. yeah. That's a place I'd love to go sometime and hike like the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. I want to go to Charleston. I've heard that's really... A neat town. Yeah. I've heard, heard that that's too. That's really neat. South Carolina. South Carolina, yeah. South Carolina, yeah. Was that where they had the... Rally thing and the girl got run over. That was Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlottesville. Charlotte. Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. That was Virginia? Virginia. Charlottesville. Okay. Right. Oh, it state that's it. My cousin though went there, and it's not. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's a strange thing. It's weird. Like you can definitely feel this racial tension there that really? you never could feel in New Mexico. Huh. Like. And I'm not saying that New Mexico is some like Shangri-La, of, like where everyone holds hands and gets yeah, along. I think racial but racial tension has gotten worse in the last five ten years. I don't know. I mean, I feel like certainly the f- the 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 flames have been fanned, so to speak. Do I think it's gotten worse? I don't know. Maybe that's the subject. I can tell you, like, <laughs> so yeah, there was one time I, I drove across Greensboro, and it's very much, it's still very like segregated. Yeah. And I went from one side of town to the other, and I remember just going into a gas station and being lost and like, hey, how do I get there? And, you know, I was definitely on the other side of town, and he was like, the guy was like looking at me like, what are you even doing in here? Like, Um, and I just was not used to that. I felt very like, (laughs) I don't know. And my uncle is just totally just cartoon racist so <laughs> i mean there's still plenty of that going around so. oh yeah i think you know i it's plenty of it around i for you sure. know, grew up in esterville was here most of my life left in when well, i was 19 or 20 and race was never an issue growing up i don't no. remember ever being an issue <clears throat> a couple months ago i was back here uh, visiting my folks and my dad and i went down to high v in this as we were walking in these guys were arguing um yeah, these two, two scraggly old white guys were hollering at this Hispanic kid and telling him to go back to his own country. Really? And he turned to them and said, I'm from Texas. I was born in Texas. I moved from Texas to here. I'm an American, you asshole. <laughs> and, you know, it's, I had never seen behavior like that in yeah. town. I had wow. never seen stuff like that in Esterville. 
Um, and I, it, yeah, bothered, bothered me quite a bit and kind of made me start to wonder, you know, is, are things going backwards a little bit in that, in that? I, I might've missed that. How long ago was that? A couple months. Really? Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. I feel like the pendulum swings and it always sort of does. Yeah. And it go, it's going to go one direction and back the other and so on and so forth. I feel like certainly has brought back this sort of, uh, I don't know, what do, you, what do you want to call it? Enabled or brought back a narrative that used to be sort of underground a little bit, or at least people were quieter about it. Maybe and now I mean now you got Tucker Carlson saying that immigrants make the world dirtier and the stuff world like just got ten feet higher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just like uh, I, yeah. I, I mean and and I don't know. but so well there was sort of a blend with immigrant and race in what you just said there and I'm flesh it out for me a little bit more. Um, right. Well. I think that the immigrant argument is something that it's an easy scapegoat always, but it's always been there. Like all of us, you know, our ancestors are not North American, right? That's a simple fact. And maybe a hundred, maybe 200 years ago, it was like, you know, race was defined as, you know, Oh, Irish or, you know, Catholic or Italian yeah. or whatever. And people are always, it's an easy scapegoat to blame people that are, you know, different, different or of a different, uh, socioeconomic status. It's just, for some reason, it's a very sort of, it appeals to people's li lizard brains on some level that it, I don't. So, and I think that racism is directly related to that. I mean, it's like when, when, when Trump says, "Oh, you know, how come you know like more Danish people aren't coming?" I mean, yeah, it's it's related, but it's like, okay. So, I don't know. I, I think the issue of race and the issue of immigration, while a lot of people are blending the two, I think they should be completely in. I, I, I think they should be separated. Um, you know, I think you know there are a lot of racists who don't like people who are are not you know white Americans just because they're not white Americans. Um, but I think that, you know, really the issues are, are two completely separate things. Um, and they wouldn't like those people, even if they weren't white, but they were Americans, which is a shame, but you, you know, can't fix stupid. Um, <laughs> when it comes to, when it comes to something like immigration, you know, let's, let's think about this in a couple different ways. I mean, I'm going to say right off the bat that our immigration system is completely friggin' broken. It's, it should not take people seven or eight years to be able to get, you know, a visa or a green card or, you know, be able to mm. earn their citizenship. It shouldn't, it should not take that long. I mean, it, it should be the equivalent of, you know, me going out to the DMV and getting my license changed. Granted, I have to have seven pieces of documentation and it's going to take me <laughs> 45 minutes to wait in mm. line. Um, <clears throat> But when it comes to immigration, I don't think people have a problem with immigration. I think people have a problem with the fact that people are coming here illegally. Um, I it, it, this is this is a really messy topic because there are a lot of factors here. Um, but you know, let, well, let me ask you: Do you think somebody should be arrested because they broke the law? Do you think you know if somebody stole something off your property, threw a rock through your window, you know, or broke into your house just to take a nap? I mean, do you think that? Somebody like this, do you think that is punishable? Do you think that behavior is something that somebody should be accounted for? That we have an issue with that. Right. Um, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's wrong to, to try to put something in place that really you doesn't like give a people wall? any choice. <laughs> but to, I mean. That, I mean, you're bringing up great points. And the, the, no one's, well, I shouldn't say no one, but no one. Um, in power is articulating those points. I mean, it's all... Yeah, like, well, how much of this is obfuscated? I mean, like, where exactly is the bones of contention? Yeah. I mean, that, that's something that has perplexed People me. have been... I feel like people have been, you know, in Obama's first term, there was big talk of, you know, immigration reform, mm -hmm. and they couldn't get it done. Yeah. Like, it, they just, the House let it die. I mean... 
And now that's nothing new. Everybody has a problem with it because the right's talking about yeah. immigration reform. Right. There's a lot of things to talk about. And the other thing is, like, immig- first of all, illegal immigration is way down. Like, it peaked in 2000 or early 2000s. And yeah, it's way it's down. Lowest under Obama, actually. And, yeah, and he deported a lot of people. And a lot of people Obama, on the left were un- angry Obama about that. He deported 10 times as many people as President Trump has. Yeah. I right mean, there, 10 times as many people were deported. And there's another issue here, and that is, like, those people come here illegally because they find work. And that means that people are hiring them. Mm -hmm. And so where is the... I don't know. I feel like that's sort of left out of the conversation. Oh, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I I know a lot of people who have come to the U.S. illegally, and I don't know one of them that's a criminal. I don't buy into that, you know, everybody who comes here is, you know... A rapist and murderer. <laughs> yeah. Well, that just sounds like a straw man. I mean, yeah, yeah I, you know. I, I, it is. Yeah. Um, but I still think that, you know, we, it, it really it all comes down to immigration reform. If we had a great immigration system, we wouldn't need a freaking wall. If we had a great immigration system where, you know, somebody could come in and check in and say, you know, hey, you know what, I want to move to the U.S. All right, let's take care of some paperwork. You know, do you have a place to stay? You know, do you have some money to get you by until you find work? Let's make sure you have the stuff in place. Okay, an hour later, have a great day, have a good time in the U.S., and you know, let's let's see what we can do to to help. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we had a system that encouraged um, that kind of immigration, as opposed to as opposed to the just massive cluster we have now, you know, maybe we wouldn't have an immigration problem. And why is it so bad? It was overregulated. That so. Yeah, I mean, we've had these, in our country's history, we've had these periods of time where there's been big influxes of immigration from, first from Europe, I guess, yeah, right? mm-hmm. and, and then, yeah, so, and, and then different <laughs> different localities yeah. in, mm-hmm. in Europe in different waves, and um, yeah, I mean, like, so how, how is it people from Central America trying to go north is different than the Irish coming from the potato famine yeah. or something. Right. right. Yeah. Well, the, the difference between that is one, we weren't, we weren't a, yeah, people think you can, but you can't, they will not let you just move to Canada unless yeah. you can contribute something to the Canadian. Right. Population. Yeah. I think, yeah. Isn't it like you have to demonstrate you got like have to have a, like a bachelor's degree or something and demonstrate what you can do for him ahead have, of time. You have to have some sort of a skill that contributes to yeah. Canada. Yeah. You, and you know, I've I've heard so many people say, "Well, I'm just going to move to Canada because you know our, you can't just do that. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can't do that with any other civilized country. Why should we expect it to to be the complete opposite? Mm-hmm. Why should we ex- be expected to just open our doors to whoever comes?" Regardless of what the reason is, right. regardless of their situation, you know, regardless of all those extenuating circumstances, because there's not another country on the planet that's a civilized country that does that. Mm. Well, yeah. One thing I always ask people when we get into the immigration subject matter is, are you a person who thinks that like a sovereignty should be able to funnel who comes in and out of their country or not they absolutely should and, have yeah. well for sure i mean that's i think that's the place to start right because yeah. if you're not if you are if you say no to that question then then what's a country then yeah right <laughs> right or what's a sovereignty so yeah i guess would you be then a globalist <laughs> oh, right. the global, the globalist Satanists <laughs> are global turning our frogs gay turning the frogs <laughs> gay <laughs> well right, yeah i mean yeah, then you want what you want is like some Star Trek existence where it's like Earthlings only and yeah. under a world government or something. I mean, yeah. what what's the end there? We're not I there guess? yet. Yeah, it's a long ass time before we get there. I mean, mm-hmm. we have to. Well, we're never going to see that. There's a lot of things to consider. I mean, I think that for one thing, society, for better or worse, our economic system depends on growth, and that means population has to at least stay about the same size right well in a lot of places in europe 
you know, people are having one or fewer kids. Oh, it's, on average. yeah, populate Germany. Pop, uh, the German population is decreasing. It's actually a really big problem. Yeah, it's a big problem in Japan. It's yeah, a big that, problem in a lot of places. And in the United States, if it weren't for immigration, we would be in the negative as well. If yeah. my understanding is right. And if you look at a place like Esterville, right, most people, for better or worse, a lot of people leave. Oh, yeah. And don't come back. Yep. And then so who comes in, right? A lot of uneducated ag workers um, from Central America. And I'm know. not even saying that they're all uneducated. A lot of them are educated. But um, it's just this interesting dynamic. There's So, you know, we have, we have jobs that we need filled because some people don't want to do them. A lot of people don't want to do them. We have people that are willing to do them. Why not let people come and do them? Um, you know, and I think the big problem with immigration is immigration isn't the problem. It's, you know, I, I don't I don't hear often that people have a problem with the fact that people are legally immigrating to this country. Mm -hmm. mm. Let me uh, run through some comments oh, real yeah. quick. Um, Eureka says, if you have an infant, you should have flu shot. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. Uh, oh, but oh, that's just fine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. I, we're I, here I, to talk. Know, that's that asshole, you know, took all the mic time. <laughs> no, we're here okay. to talk. Um, cultures are important. Differences in cultures are important. Cultures being lost because they blend together too much, I think, is is tragic. Um you know, when you go to, to places like New York and Chicago and San Francisco and you see the Chinatown and you see the little Italy and you see the little Germany and, you know, a little Bavaria and Frenchtown, you know, there's so much beauty in every individual culture. Um, you know, we don't want to get to the point where we lose those. Um, did America ever really have its own independent culture? I don't know. I, th I, I think, think we, we kind of do. I think we get caught up in this word assimilation, um, maybe taking that to the extreme too much because we say we want all these immigrants to assimilate. Um, and I think maybe we're implying that they should lose their culture, which is not, mm. in my opinion, what assimilate means yeah. at all. No. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, the fear of losing cultural ideas or ideals, for one thing, there are the laws that we all know and abide by, or not, <laughs> where we risk, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, the consequences of that. And that's, that's no different whether, you know, whether you're here, you know, whether you're an immigrant, a first gen immig generation immigrant from anywhere else in the world, you're still going to be subject to mm -hmm. those same, <laughs> I, well, so in other words, I guess there is, at least there is the law, right? Yeah, right. Setting the floor for, right. This is the mandated assimilation. Right. Yeah. And I think it's also true that in most places there are like basic moral cultural codes that don't change all that much. There are some that do, sure, from culture to culture, but like don't kill your neighbor. Well, That's pretty obvious, right? Like, What do you guys think of this? Like what about culture being as a means to say like identify yourself with a group that's larger than yourself wouldn't – culture in a lot of ways make a lot more sense than grouping up by skin color, for example. So like, let's say I'm in Germany or something and culture in Germany could be quite a bit different than what I'm used to here in Astorville, Iowa. But my next door neighbor is an Asian guy from Minnesota. Sure. I'm going to have a lot <laughs> more in common with yeah. Asian yeah. guy from Minnesota than I will with the Germans. Yeah. Sure. Just because... We both grew up in the United States, so yeah. absolutely, yeah. And you know, and there is a big difference in regards to you know preserving a culture as opposed to preserving. <clears throat> I don't think it's quite accurate, but I'm going to say a way of life. Um, you know, and, and that kind of goes to you know you're talking about well, you know, we have our laws as a baseline that we need to follow. Um, we have our laws, you know, because we want to prevent people from hurting other people. Um, and that's it. I mean, really, every single one of our laws is designed to prevent people from hurting other people. 
No, not every single one. There are a lot of just mm-hmm. stupid laws. No, I get what you're saying. That you can attest to, but you know, you can. And there are cultures out there where you know hurting others is a part of their culture. Yeah. Um, you know, look at the the guy who you know tried to spread the word of Jesus in you know Indonesia oh, yeah. and got shot. Yeah. 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 That's their culture. Well, Probably you know, a stupid while we don't idea. Accept that, yeah. You know, there are a lot of parts of your culture that, you know, you are welcome to, you know, please, mm-hmm. you know, please bring over here. Please, right. not you know, saying inviting them or anything. You know, if they're happy where they are. Good for them. But I think I'm sorry. No, yeah. Well, I you know I, to kind of dovetail on some of that. Like I think it's a reasonable discussion to have to in, in with certain examples like take Europe. They've got waves of uh, Muslim immigration from the Middle East in different countries where mm-hmm. they've got Muslim ghettos in certain places. Right. And there, it's, I think, a reasonable discussion to say we've got butting heads in some ways where culture from Islam doesn't, the Eastern culture there doesn't necessarily blend with Western. Uh, right. Parts of it, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, death to apostates and that kind of thing. Like but, <laughs> it's but, too know, extreme. There, there are a lot of parts of their culture that, that do. Right. Um, but how do we, how do we make that work? Well, it goes yeah. to follow the law. Hey, you do yep. whatever you want to within the confines of the laws mm-hmm. of the country that you went to. Right. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't understand why that's so hard, but I'm not a religious fanatic. So I, yeah. there's a lot of, I mean, there are things to consider there. So for one thing, we talk about assimilation. So, in this country, Muslim immigrants assimilate, quote unquote, better. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons for that is we have, I mean, for them to get here is a bigger, like, you're probably in a different socioeconomic status because you have to get on a plane or get on a boat or whatever, right? And then, in other words, it's not just like waves of, you know, peasants or whatever, right? Like, yep. whereas Europe, they're going to have that issue. And they've also been much more open arms to, you know, uh, asylum seekers right. and such, for better or worse. And right. you're going to have backlash to that. And it's also true that, um, you know, they they have had bigger problems with, quote unquote, assimilation and like racial and cultural like tensions. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Um, we have that here, uh, but maybe for other reasons. And I don't know. I, I don't know. And I, it, I do think you kind of have to take it on a case by case basis. And, but certainly like religious extremism often is like a result of other issues like economic problems yep. or yep. whatever upbringing <laughs> upbringing maybe yeah mm-hmm. i don't know yeah that's interesting uh you guys want to do one more controversial controversial question might as well all right we're losing viewership so oh, we're, we're might be a little long in the off. teeth back, let's talk about something like bdsm <laughs> okay <laughs> Should teachers be allowed to carry guns at school? Oh, God. Hell yes. Absolutely. If they have a concealed carry permit, you know, by all means. If bullets from some unknown shooter are flying all over the place, I definitely think we should have lots of people with guns shooting randomly. Just kidding. No, <laughs> As a thinking. teacher, I don't want a gun. Don't want one. Have no interest in carrying a gun. Never, uh, never really. I, I'm totally for your right to bear arms for sure. I just don't want one. And yeah. I don't want kids to I don't want kids to fear me because I have a firearm. I don't want kids I don't even to Do you be think quite should even know if you have one or not. I'm sure they would. Yeah. Well it'd be a it'd be a huge issue for them not to know. Hmm. Like well it, like okay, so let's say Guns are now allowed in the classroom. I mean, they're going to hear about it, obviously. They're gonna... Well, they'll, they'll hear that it's passed a law, but they're not going to know, oh, hey, Mrs. Bruns is packing a, yeah. you know, a Glock 9mm in her bra strap. I, I... Oh, okay, yeah, I can. I, yeah, I mean, it's not gonna, you're not going to 
put it on your belt loop and here's your Glock, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah, then it's not really consistent. But isn't that part right. of the isn't that part of the whole draw of it is like if bad guys know other guys have guns, then they won't what is yeah, that like I part just, of the argument? Like in other words, you should be conspicuously I don't yeah. know. There I'm I would be really, really, really uncomfortable with eighth graders having direct access to a firearm. Why would they have direct access to a firearm? Twenty of them want to beat me up and pin me down. <laughs> and steal the gun, um, or five of them. <laughs> they, yeah, they, they, kids they can be pretty. Biometric fingerprint locks. For, okay. For firearms, so you can have a gun in your pocket, and if I take it out of your pocket, I cannot access the trigger. Okay. Or the safety, or the clip, or anything, unless I. Well, of course, I could not get. But how, I have no idea. This is, I have no idea how available. Like how common is that? Right, and that'd be an ideal situation for sure. But sure. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I've I've got a. Uh, the family member's got one. So here's a related question. How do you feel about like metal detectors and? Yeah, I, I would. I mean, it's slow everything down for sure, but um, I'm for as many safety measures in public education that need to be taken. I'm totally for that. I just don't know how how much more safe an armed teacher would be than an unarmed teacher. Mm-hmm. So. Or if that would cause more problems. But, you know, beyond, <clears throat> I'm a big fan of locking all of the doors except for the office door. Yep, I think that's sure. a great step. But beyond that, really, is anything else going to make a damn bit of difference? No. Um, you lock your classrooms. Uh, like you said, lock every door. But right now, there's nothing stopping a kid from bringing his dad's pistol in his backpack and sneaking it into the school. Would would um would metal detectors? Yeah, I mean, assuming assuming every kid goes through one. Okay, so let's say every kid goes through a metal detector. So I'm a kid, I'm a high school kid. You know, there's some, you know, young police officer here. I walk into the school. I have a gun in my pocket. The first thing that I do is shoot the safety officer. All bets are off now. Yeah. I mean, mm. is I don't know. It's. That's a bigger freaking conversation. Yeah. That's a big mm. conversation. I, yep. And it hasn't been, I, I don't think it's been done yet. So I don't, I don't think teachers are, I could be wrong. I, I don't think teachers are armed anywhere. So it's not really, <laughs> Texas. I mean, it's, is, are they? I don't know. I, 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 I heard something about that. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if that was. It always really, starts in Texas. It always, so, yeah, it starts, it always in starts in Texas. So it's, it's all conjecture <laughs> right now of whether what would work and what wouldn't, but. Personally, working direct, directly with kids, I think it'd be, I, I would be extremely anxious to be armed around, by myself, to be armed around 20 kids. <laughs> yeah, there's some yeah. kids that I went to school with that I'd be nervous if there was yeah. Right. I mean, I feel like why would we statistically, you're asking for a lot more risk than if we don't want guns in the school, why are we bringing the them in up. as an adult? You know? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. No, it's, I'm totally pro pro gun though. I, I mean, it, you should have one. I, I think in my it all opinion. has to do with mental health. Oh God, mental that, that, health is a huge. It's not guns; it's mental health. That's the only issue. Yeah, um, and it's so underfunded, especially in Iowa. <laughs> Iowa's awful. By miles, yeah. every state is underfunded yeah. by miles. <laughs> we don't have beds. We don't have yeah. you know therapists. We don't have psychiatrists. I think you can make an argument. Maybe assault rifles. I don't really see why anyone needs a freaking assault rifle. I just don't get it. But well, you know what? You know what? You know what AR stands for? Uh, oh, I just heard Armalite. it the other. Yeah, yeah. it's just aesthetic. Armalite is the the company that manufactured the rifles, and they just made some parts interchangeable, so you could customize the stock, so you could customize the grip, so you could customize, you know, whether you wanted to have a flashlight, or whether you wanted to have, you know. A shiny scope, a big scope, a small scope, um, a laser pointer. I, you know, the the term assault rifle is so misused. It's not even funny. You know, I I have, you know, deer hunting rifles that are a hell of a lot more powerful than you know a typical assault rifle that shoots a you know a two twenty three. Um, you know, and they can shoot yeah, two, just as fast. Two twenty threes aren't that big. No, I mean, you know the the only the only yeah. difference between a assault rifle. And, you know, a hunting rifle is the look. That's the only difference. Right, because and I think, I think what we're, what Dave might have been getting at is like your military-style weapons, like your M14s or your... Um, 
uh, like your machine gun type weapons. I, I don't see a practical use for that. Which are already illegal yeah. in the United States. Right. So it, yeah. A yeah. firearms yeah. license. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. So. One one squeeze of the trigger, one one round. Yep. One you round. Can, you know, yeah. Grandma can't be packing a newsy when she goes yeah. to the grocery store. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know, that's that's already illegal. And right. you know, everything else is just how fast you can pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, and the, 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 with that whole gun control conversation, I I always want to. I, I hate how things are always condensed into bumper sticker type. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Your, uh, hey, that's a great, you know, yeah. great Green Day quote. Get your philosophy from a bumper sticker. Yeah. <laughs> and it, you, you could say that with any single topic that yeah. is a hot button issue. Yeah. Is there's the, All nuance is gone, it seems like, oh. in 2019. It's a yeah. shame. It's, well, oh, at least you got the year right, though. I'm still in 2018. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I still write 2007 from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's kind of how it, like, whatever kind of year your maybe your brain finally is fully developed and you're like officially an adult and you kind of stay that way uh-huh. in your mind forever. <laughs> yeah, man. Isn't that a depressing thought, though? It just seems like, you know, my parents are like, how do I do with this cell phone? I'm like, oh my God, is that going to be me? Like, <laughs> with your. Google glasses or something. Yeah. Am I going to be saying the same thing? Am I going to be like, you know, like every generation ever is like, oh, these kids these days. Yeah. Like, am I going to be saying that? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I think everybody falls off the wagon at some point. They just sort of freeze, freeze frame. and Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. I, I can go no further. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. Like, I have not joined the Twitterverse. And I feel like that's probably a generational thing. Oh, I yeah. can't do Twitter. I've Twitter. tried. I've tried yeah. multiple times. I just can't do it. I don't do it. I do Twitter. I don't do Instagram. I've never really figured that out. Mm. I do it just to, just to share cool pictures with my yeah. friends and stuff. It's, it's just yeah. a picture sharing thing, right? It's not Pretty a... Much. I, okay. At least I think so, unless it's a lot more complicated than I... Yeah. Be. Facebook hasn't bought them yet. <laughs> Everyone... Yeah. Yet. <laughs> yet. I don't know. I think Facebook might be kind of... Peeking out. Yeah, it's got some bad, bad PR. And it's had some pretty rough PR in the yeah. past year yeah, or two, hasn't it? Isn't that the best time to jump on it after it gets a lot of PR? They get their shit straight. Um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of privacy concerns around Facebook. They were hacked by... Were not hacked. They were, you know, accessed by... Um, was it the, not the Brookings Institute, but it's not far from it. Or Cambridge. Cambridge Analytica. Uh, Cambridge Analytica. Mm, yeah. Um, you know, and they saw their stock take a tumble after that, so I can't help but think that they remedied that situation. On the other hand, there's like the Walmart effect. You can grow so much, but, and then you're done. Like, and I, you know, like there's only so many that. Walmarts you can put in the world. Before. But working with like kids, and I coach high school basketball, and I teach middle school. No one really uses Facebook, and it, like the kids don't. It's all Instagram. It's all Snapchat. It's absolutely huge huh. with teenagers, and and really, Facebook's kind of. It's like what the what the oldsters use. Yeah, it's for us. Yeah, it's for us. I I quit Facebook for several years. Um, And right before I moved back here, I started it again just so I could connect with people that I, you know, grew up with. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've fallen off and gotten back on various times with social media, and I don't know. It's nice to. It is nice to take take a break break from time to time. It turns into such a time suck. Yeah. Different, ugh, you, there's a, a if you have an iPhone, there's a way you can um, tell how much time you spend or how much screen time you have on each <laughs> this app. This is gonna be dangerous. I, I don't. God, somebody. I saw yeah, it at a presentation. I I don't remember where it's at. It's in settings. Yeah. Um, and you can have it report to you, um, like at the end of every day, how much screen time you've had. Oh God. Um, like I and it's in settings. You just you know click on settings and you scroll down and it says screen time. Um, God, my phone's always blowing up here. <laughs> I'm Shit, this is scary. Seven hours and thirty minutes of screen time today. Today, oh man! Well, I mean, it's a weekend and I have nothing to do. Right, so, and I mean, I'm sure mine's like, just I'm as on... bad, but it's just that number is. That's like as long as I've been up. Well, and <laughs> you know I. <laughs> 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 no, I was up early. I guess. 
Yeah, I mean, but it, you know, it is a cool way to you know gauge if you're concerned about that. But you know, I, we all use our phones so much as our primary method of communication. We use it as uh, our calendars, our email, our information, uh, information, our news outlet. Mm-hmm. It's like the extension of the body. Yeah. Well, anymore. you know, it's it's kind of yeah, it's getting there. I remember seeing when smartphones first started to. I mean, like the Blackberries and some of the internet capable yeah. phones. And then they had, I think maybe concurrently they had sort of primitive tablet type computers at the same. I'm like, Oh, I, I bet the, the line between the phone and the computer is going to yeah. continually blur. blur. Yeah. And I'd say we're definitely there and have been there mm-hmm. for maybe a decade ish. I'd decades. say. Yeah. I just got a VR headset the other day. Oh yeah. Nice. PlayStation. And nice. I mean, it's, I, I can see so many so many amazing uses. This is what it's called, so you can take them to different locations. Like, I could take my kids to the International Space Station. and then That is Dude, so that's cool. cool. I had no idea Astrobo was that yep, advanced. It's cool. There's We only have one set now that the whole district uses, but they get some pretty good use. And kids can like you take them to Mars? Yep. Oh, take them to Mars. That's and, cool. Yeah, Man. kids love it. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Now, that stuff should be what's being broadcast. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 Holy cow. Yep. You know, you all figured you were doing math with slide rules and abacus <laughs> yeah. and that kind of thing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I mean, the downside to that, though, you know, are we are we going to be teaching something like you know ecology by not taking our kids out into the woods and right. showing them a plant, mm-hmm. yeah. but you know, have them in this cement cube and they're wearing a headset and all they can do is see it; they can't touch it or right. feel yeah. it or getting right. plugged into the matrix. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Spooky. Yeah, maybe next. I do time think can... people will. I mean, people still. There's still humanity, right? Like, I mean, even with all our gadgets and stuff, people still go to the football game, Sorry. right, or whatever. Yeah. Or they go outside because they plant nerds mm-hmm. or whatever. <laughs> plant nerds. Yeah. So. Is your wife after you, Kyle? Yeah, oh, I sent me a... <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, if you're watching, I'm sorry I left the bologna out. Didn't put it back in the fridge, oh. so... Whoops. Well, now she has to throw it away. Yep. Does that stuff Actually, go bad, though? Because yeah. it's, it's so preserved. Yeah, yeah it's just It'll salt and byproducts, pretty much. <laughs> 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 yep. Spam of a different... Salt and, like, eyeballs. Yeah. Liquefied eyeballs. Slime. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, it was fun.